Hello everyone, my name is Tony Hong. I'll be giving you a deck breakdown of my Rosemont Control deck that I won the Sunday Core TCT official webcam tournament with. Um, this is actually the first tournament that I ever entered, um, besides I guess like pre-releases and stuff. So I wasn't really going into this expecting to win, but the deck seems to have performed well enough to kind of carry me through. Um, so first off, uh, this deck is very defensive and basically relies on slowing your opponent down as much as possible while you build up at a marginally faster rate due to the lower cost and then getting as much chip damage in as possible along the way while preventing yourself from getting chip damage. Um, you really need to be careful in how you build up a board state and you have to try to eliminate potential threats as soon as they appear. Um, but with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'll start with the eggs. So uh, first we have one copy of Frymon or Freemon, uh, however you pronounce that, and then four copies of Tanemon. Um, Tanemon is definitely the easier card to uh, fulfill the requirement for, um, hence why I'm using more of them. Uh, Frymon is, uh, gives a little bit more DP, but it's a bit more conditional, so it's a bit harder to work with, um, though sometimes it can come in clutch. It's just uh, it's a lot harder to activate, because sometimes your opponent will only play like two Digimon at a time, or one Digimon at a time, and it's uh, just hard to get that activation out. Um, so with the main deck, let's get started with level threes. Um, so right now, we got four Agumons, we got four Tentomons, and four Goblimons. So Agumon and Tentomon are arguably the most important level threes for green at the moment. Um, with Agumon, it just gives you a straight 1000 DP boost on your turn, which helps a ton due to the fact that green Digimon are typically a little weaker in exchange for their lower Digivolution costs. And um, Tentamon can suspend, basically can suspend a rookie, anything with 3000 DP or less, um, so that you can swing at something you normally wouldn't be able to. Um, and then it can also apply for other things like the, the Frymon, of course. Um, Goblimon is also a nice two drop to play since you can you could just you could just drop it and get another level two on the board or a level three on the board um, for any extra swings next turn. Um, so for level fours we have four Kabuterimon, four Vegemon, and four Woodmon. So with Kabuterimon, um, this one's probably one of the best level fours you can get for green at the moment. Um, since it only costs one to evolve, um, and it also gives a pretty good DP boost when inherited, um, which is, it's just really good all around. Um, for Vegemon, it's also very good because you've got one cost to evolve. It's basically a vanilla, but it only costs four to drop. So often you can just drop this and end your turn with it, and then you have something that can either swing into other blockers to kind of clash with them or um it's basically like it's it's like just a like slightly more expensive rookie basically it's it's really good um in that regard and um it's definitely been really good to play um then you have four woodmon which is of course very important if you're playing a deck as defensive as this um since you you need blockers to prevent damage but you also need to uh, protect your rosemon and other digimon that you might want to keep so very very crucial to have four of these. Uh, so for level four or fives, I mean, we have four Lilymons, three Okuamons, and two Cherrymons. Um, so they're all two cost to evolve, so they're very cheap. Um, so that's really good. Um, Lilymon can suspend one of your opponent's non-blocker Digimon, which is great since it can kind of open up a handful of plays. Um, so, you, so you can either it'll, you can either open up allowing you to uh, swing into something uh, with a different Digimon, and give, or you can even give yourself a DP boost with something like Kabuterimon or Frymon, for example, if you happen to have that. Uh, it can even open up uh, a plays with like the Terrorist Cluster, which we'll get into later. Um, we have Okuamon, which has the same stats as Lilymon, but uh, Okuamon's Inheritable instead says that you can gain a memory when you delete something and survive uh, with this Digimon specifically. Um, so that can help a lot, especially if you have, like, say, two Megas on the board, one with Lilymon and one with Akuamon, and then you swing with the Mega that has Lilymon, and then uh, 
swing at the rested Digimon with with the Digimon that has Akuamon, and then gain a memory that way. That's really good. Um, so nice little combo there. And then Cherrymon is um, another blocker that you have at your disposal. So you'll have six blockers total. total. Um, it's very, very important in this deck, I think. It's got a slightly higher DP than the Woodmon, just by only by a thousand, but it's still a two cost to evolve. Um, so that's pretty good, but getting more blockers is is pretty good for this deck. Um, something to note is getting a level 5 on the board is probably one of the more important things for this deck, as it allows you to um, use Izzy, and it also opens up Digivolving into a Mega on the next turn. Um, and notably that most opponents will try to prevent you from getting a level 5 on board, so you want to try to build up at least two of these on the board at the very least. That way you can kind of keep Izzy active and uh, keep the possibility open of evolving into a Mega that turn, even if you get Memory Starved. Um, so now for the Megas, we have uh, the Signature 3 Rosemon, 2 Titamon, and 2 Puppetmon. Um, I know a fair amount of people will rag on the Rosemon, but I genuinely think Rosemon is pretty decent if you build around it specifically. Uh, I'm not going to say that Rosemon is amazing, but it definitely does what it's supposed to do, which is slow your opponent down, which is literally the whole point of the deck. Um, your opponent will either be forced to play around it, or they either have to go for like, whether it's like a removal option, like say like Gaia Force, um, they have to either use things to attack into it, which you'll usually block, which is one less attack you'll have to worry about. Um, or they just flat out ignore this thing and they swing into security and they, they cut their attacks by half. Um, now, in the best case scenarios, you want to have Rosemon attacking to other Digimon rather than attacking to security. Um, since 11k is pretty pretty frail still, in my opinion. Um, with how many things that, can, that you could probably run into. Um, but sometimes you do need to risk it just to get Rosemon rested so that you can activate the ability. So it's a bit of a gamble there, um, which I had to do a couple of times in some occasions, though usually they work out for me. Um, now with, we also have Tidemon here, um, which is just a good uh, vanilla that every, every deck has pretty much, but... Um, it's a cheap 2 cost to evolve with 12k. Um, it's very good since it. if you get the right inheritables on this thing, you can basically swing over most of almost everything. Um, if you get really lucky with how your board's set up, you can actually swing over Omnimon. Um, though I never really found myself needing to do that with this. Um, but yeah, it's really cheap. Ideally, um, in an ideal board state that I actually have achieved a few times, um, you would have like a Titamon with a Lilymon under it, and then you would have a Rosemon with like an Akuamon or something or anything under it and you would swing into security with the Titamon um, to get the Lilymon proc to rest something and then you would swing into that rested Digimon with the Rosemon that way you kind of get a little bit of a chip and then you also save your Rosemon and deny a little bit of resource on your opponent's board or I guess deny pieces there um, but that's, that's something that's happened a couple times and something that you probably want to push for because um, that's that's a really nice thing to have is just to just constantly deny resources while also um, pushing your end game. And then lastly you have uh, Puppetmon which is just a really really good card especially for this deck. Um, being able to suspend something on play and then prevent your opponent from unsuspending anything can really just like stick your opponents at times. This is actually like literally how I just won the final match is just with with this card. I played both of these and I stuck my opponent and he wasn't he didn't think to play around it um, due to the kind of time pressure that was going on. Um, so this literally saved me the game there. Um, so for the options now we have just four flower cannon and three terrors cluster. Um, so the four the flower cannons are a little bit self-explanatory. It's basically the... It's a really undeniably strong card for green. And it, it's pretty cheap. It only costs two. So anytime your opponent... Your opponent's always having to be wary of putting you at two or more. Because you, it just gives you the option to flower cannon. Um, 
So it's an it's kind of an immediate omnipresent threat there as well. Um, it it's definitely a savior if it comes out of security because it just rests like everything without blocker. Um, and at times this will basically just win you the game because you can just if you need to clear a field of blockers you could just play a flower cannon rest the blocker and then just swing in for game um, you can also use it to say like rest something you know swing into it or you can even use it in combination with terrorist cluster um, so terrorist cluster is actually um, I didn't realize how how important this card would be other than for my testing like it's it's been it's been a crutch like uh, it's it's been doing really good for me uh since it's basically it puts your opponent's rested digimon on the bottom of deck and then discards the sources it's basically my main strategy is to dig as hard as i can for this card when i'm facing like something like an omnimon deck because um just preventing your opponent from building up anything and then anytime you see a threat you just tear this cluster it is actually really strong um it's. I don't really think I would have as much of a chance against those types of decks without this card. So it's it's pretty important. And then finally, uh, for the last three cards, I have three Izzy's. Um, I actually got this idea for using the Izzy's from True Champion Steven originally, and looking at this list is actually really similar to his list. Um, I think like he doesn't use Terra's Cluster. Uh, which I think is important, but um, otherwise, like the whole setup is pretty similar, besides a couple of cards. Um, though that wasn't really my intention from the beginning. I actually, my original deck was a Rosemon deck, but it, um, it did originally have like Mimis and like Palmons and like Togemons and a bunch of other stuff, I suppose. Um, and I originally got the, I did get the re idea to use the Izzy's from them, and I, so I went through and tested that. Just that aspect of it. And I really liked how it turned out. Since drawing cards with this list is like super important. Because um, it gives you access to like as many cards as possible. And is absolutely like what I would say is like what carried me through this tournament. Is just getting as many cards as possible so I can access all this other stuff. Um, it would get me like blockers. It would give me like the two puppet mons always. And I could always just like play both of them down. Um, and I would always have like the evos I need because of Izzy. Um, eventually when I started grinding this list down while playtesting it with a friend, um, that's when I started to weed out some of the fluffy, like fluff and stuff. Um, and then like, I didn't even notice how similar it looked to like True Champion Steven's list until like the day before the tournament. And I was like looking through the lists again. Um, but I guess that means like, if we've... We gotta. We both gotta be onto something. If like we both have like a similar assortment of cards, I guess, right? Right. Um, but yeah, it's imperative that uh, you get level fives on the board because it it activates this Izzy. So you want to build up a level five as soon as possible, and maybe two if you get the chance. Um, so I guess a bit of a tournament report. Um, so round one, I went against a red Gallantmon deck. Um, I went 2-0 there. Um, uh, all the games actually went on pretty long, mainly because of the nature of this deck. Um, it's it's pretty pretty darn difficult to get past it, though. I would say it's it's definitely caused my opponents to kind of go through a uh, war of attrition kind of type playstyle since they all would always have to promote their blockers to prevent me from pushing for games so we would just both be standing off and doing nothing while we kind of just slowly build up our boards because that's the only thing that we could do was just stare each other down and build up boards um round two i did go against uh rookie rush um i lost the first game uh, mainly because i kind of bricked i had like three option cards in hand and like one mega and something like a level five or something like that i don't i don't quite remember but it wasn't a great start um but then i won the two games after that uh round three i went against uh purple lilithmon deck um i won the first round though most of that being uh kind of for the fact that my opponent bricked really hard and he still made it a close game so it was it was pretty close there um 
Though the second game, since we took so long on the first game, um, we actually tied on the second game. So I ended up technically taking that one. But the first game was a bit closer for comfort than it, even though my opponent like bricked for so long. Um, round four, I went against a blue Omnimon deck. And this was actually one of my shorter games that I played, surprisingly. Um, mainly because uh, when I was playing against my opponent, I played the denial game like really good this time around. Um, anytime he got a level five on the board, I would immediately like do something to it, whether it be like flower cannon crashing into it with something and just like trading units or terrors clusting anything that came up. Um, and to the point where he didn't have any more resources and he was just forced to constantly keep like hard playing things. Um, and then I just keep responding to it and then just keep chipping away. Um, so I got two wins, uh, two wins there. Uh, round five. I went against a um, red Omnimon deck, and this one was on stream, I think. Uh, I won the first round, lost the second round, and then um, we were supposed to tie on the third on the third uh, game, but my opponent decided to concede since he was going to leave anyway, um, effectively giving me the win. So I I got really lucky there, I suppose, um, given that. Uh, I wouldn't have had a perfect record without that. So, but my opponent was very gracious. It was it was very very nice very nice person to play against. Um, and it was a very fun match. It was very back and forth. Um, so then, going into round six off stream, um, I went against another rookie rush deck. Uh, very entertaining game to play. Um, they played a they played a lot of puppet mons. Um, I think they played. Uh, they played like the, they played a bit more blue than normal, I think, but it made for a very, it's a very interesting match since um, most of the time like the game was getting stalled by both ends, since my opponent kept playing Puppetmon like literally like in the last like three turns of one of the games, and my entire board just stayed locked, though um, the advantage couldn't be pushed that as much further since you know he was stuck playing Puppetmon's a bunch. Um, and then I just kept like trying to deny the puppet mons, but very very interesting game there. And then the final match, um, my was against the purple Beelzemon, Piedmon, Millenniumon deck. Um, my opponent actually failed a deck check on the first first game, or so he took a game loss on the first game, and then I lost the second game, and then won the third game by like literally the skin of my teeth because of. Uh, and I won because of Puppetmon and uh, because my opponent forgot to take into account the Rosemon. Um, so that was that was very good uh, for, well, at least for me. Um, but I guess there you have it. Um, here's the list. Uh, I guess I should give a quick shout out to uh, Tricky Jim uh, for getting me back into card games. Um, I was originally mainly like a Pokemon player. Um, and I've been watching, watching a lot of Tricky Gym videos, and I kind of am a local there, I suppose. Um, but they've been supporting me in the background, and it's been great. Um, so big shout-outs to, to their channel. Um, and then shout-out to the core TCG and the judges for the excellent experience. Um, sorry to the judges for having to put up with my long games. Um, I think almost every game the judge had to come in and let us know that we're going into overtime so um apologies for that uh, i'm just kind of a naturally slow player i don't really mean to push for time like that it's just um i'm not really used to the tournament environment as much so it my game's kind of just drawn long because one i'm have like this huge hand that i had to kind of like stretch over and like hide like this and like crane my neck over it was it was a weird experience there but um i, I guess it's just how it is um but uh, there's my deck review.